How does that happen? Well, verse 18 clearly says, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. You see, we don't do these things on our own. We have not become new on our own. And it's so interesting that we so strongly believe in this scripture that it's a part, it's written on, if you look in your bulletins, if you look online, if you look anywhere, most things that are written has this scripture there. It's the very foundation of this church. It's what we truly believe because we want to look past someone's past. Oftentimes you've heard me say that I've met people before and when I meet them I say, they'll tell me what they're, where they've come from, what they've gone through. And I understand that everyone has a past, everyone has been through something. But what's most important to me is where they are now and how we can help them get to where God has called them to be on down the line. You see, past is not as important as your future is. You've got to start believing that in yourselves. You see, it's so strongly believed here, but the interesting thing is there are still folks that are still holding on to that past. They're still not letting go, holding on to all of those old items that have been building up over decades and decades of time, sometimes even passed around to the next generation. Do you realize that even this generation, us, myself, have to say, no, no, we don't want that. You realize that you cannot take on someone else's baggage as well. You see, when you start taking on someone else's past and you start making it part of your future, it can taint your own future. Now, I'm not saying everything that you need to release, but there are many items, and I'm sure that you probably know, and that's where this paper that you have, that's where we're going with that. That's where we're going. You see, the thing is that many folks have done things that, you know, we're not so proud of, myself included. But at the end of the day, if our Father has reconciled himself to us and us to him, why are we still holding on? Why are we still holding on? You see, here's what happens. Society will tell you how much of a failure you are. Some of your friends or so-called friends or even some of your enemies out there will tell you what a failure that you are. It's only you that has to, that's the one that takes that in and begins to believe in that. Instead of believing what the word says, the word says that you are not failure. The word says that you are worthy. The word says that he is with you. He is for you. He stands with you, beside you, around you, in back, everywhere, everywhere you go. And yet folks still carry that baggage, that heavy weight that's weighing them down, weighing them down so heavily and not realizing that victory is just one step, one step away from exactly where that old baggage was. Leave it behind. Society of the world, they look at you in that exact manner. You realize I was meeting with a, an ex-inmate um, a couple, few weeks back, the program that we're, we're starting. And one of the things that he was telling me was that, you know, a lot of churches come into the prisons and they'll speak to them but as soon as they get out of prison, the churches say, oh, no, you can't come here. They look at you strange or funny. They think that, well, maybe you might cause harm. The very ones that are coming to help are the very ones that are turning their backs. That is not this church. That will never be this church. Our arms are always open. Why? Because God's arms are always open, ready to receive, ready to receive. The past is the past. How do we help people get better? How do we help people get stronger? You see, when you turn your back on someone, guess what? They tend to turn their backs on you and begin to revert right back to the same things that they had done in the past. How do we stop that cycle? See, our Father has given us the, the tools, the know-how, and the word on how to stop that cycle. You see, God's children, we need to look out for God's children. You see, society, this world, we know it's a, a world that likes to separate, separate folks. But do you understand that that's a tool of the enemy? That's the tool of the devil right there, just separation. I preached that some time ago, separation brings destruction. 
How does that happen? It's because when we get isolated, all of a sudden we get into our own selves and then we start to think that we're no good to anyone else. And so therefore, we're going to remain the way in the state that we are. This is why fellowship is in our name. This is why we are called to fellowship and rally around people, bear one another's burdens, scripture has told us. You see, Christ is gathering many. He's been doing it for years. He's reconciled them all to, to him. You see, we have a duty to bring others into the fold right now. We've got folks, anytime we see, and, and prayerfully it's happened today, we have folks that haven't been here this is the first time. And what I saw was folks saying, hi, I'm so-and-so. Folks telling me we're a family, exactly what we are. That's what has to happen. We need to do that in our daily lives. Not pushing people away, but bringing them towards. It's not bringing them towards you. See, if you get self out of the way, then you get yourself out of the way. You start realizing you're bringing people towards our Father, letting them see the love of Him through you. That's why we do all of these things. I can't. I can tell you that, and the numbers will go out. I can tell you that we, the, the the amount of food that we've given out, the clothing that we've given out, the hands, the prayers, all of these different things. The numbers are vast. But see, that's what we're called to do. And do you realize each and every time that you do that, that seed, that one seed that you're doing, you're planting right there, can strengthen someone else, another one of God's children, and bring them closer and closer to him. We're not here to turn people away. We're here to bring them closer. We have a duty to make disciples without regards of where they came from or where they've been or what they've done in their past. See, working past the past can be difficult for many, but it's not obtainable. You see, it's when you start walking more in the spirit and not in the flesh. You start seeing people differently. Start seeing people for who they are. All of these burdens, they start to get lighter for folks because now they're not holding on to them any longer. Learning the nature and habit of forgiving brings a sense of peace to individuals. When you learn the nature of forgiving, it brings a sense of peace to individuals. There's often times, and sometimes you don't have to go up to the person and tell them, you have to do this within your heart. It has to be from your heart. And when I say heart, don't think about this, this, this vessel that's pumping, this, this, this machine that's just pumping inside of us. I'm speaking about your spiritual heart. Years ago, I started writing, and I said, it's a heart thing. If you look at the scriptures, so many things about heart. Guard your heart. Watch your heart. So much about your heart. Your heart is so important. See, we have it in us because we have the Holy Spirit in us. It's seen differently. You see, I know that individuals can be their own worst enemy. Philippians 3, 12 through 14 says, Not that I have already obtained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, do, I do not count myself as apprehended, meaning he doesn't count himself as achieved it yet. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching toward those things which are ahead, press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God is in Jesus Christ. See, there's so many folks that are so hard on themselves, so hard on themselves. They think that I should have done this better. I should have done that better. I, I could have been perfect at this. Paul's telling you right now that he's not gotten there. None of us has gotten there, but we are trying to get there. We're trying to obtain it. You see, perfection comes when we are with the Lord. Perfection comes when this flesh, this, this outer shell is shed. Perfection comes when we are more in the spirit and not in the flesh. When we're no longer wrestling, as Paul has said, he says it's such a tongue twister, and I love it. You know, why do I do the things that I know I ought not, yet I still do? I, I just, when I think about it, I think about the wrestling. Even myself, every day, sometimes it's like, you know, oh, I really want to, nope, I shouldn't do that. Oh, I really, no, 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 that's not what God would have me to do. Or as Elder says, sometimes when he's driving, oh, I can't believe, oh, okay, let me hold back. Let me hold back. Those persons, those people driving out there, they're just... Let me hold back. It's God's children out there. Sometimes we have to show some respect, not necessarily for the child, but for God. Then we start to learn that we can have respect for God's children. Again, it's not unobtainable. It is obtainable. We've got to start thinking differently, walking differently. What did I say? Walk funny? 
We got to walk funny. See, folks are un un unable to move forward because they're so hard on themselves. They remain in a paralyzed state. They're so unable to move forward or press forward to any goal, let alone the prize of the upward calling. They can't get to that because they're still stuck in that same state that they've been and feel like I'm unworthy. I'm not righteous enough. I, I just, whatever someone has told them, and let me tell you, sometimes that's someone, not always, and I tell you, you're not going to give the devil that much credit because he's not omnipresent. He can't be in every place at the same time, but yet we do know that he can send out his army, and sometimes they speak. And if we allow and you just hear that and allow that in, then all of a sudden you become those things. But see, it's something that you have to allow. It doesn't have to happen. Job showed that we can fight against anything that the enemy comes. All we have to do is learn the submission part. We start to get the submission part, and then all of a sudden we start firing on more better and better cylinders, and we start realizing that we do have the power because there is power. There is power within you. You so up in that instance, that, that trying to get towards that, that upward calling, up is in this instance such a precious and golden. It's almost like, well, let's go to this, this time of year. One of my favorite movies, I've seen the, the newer ones, the older, the, the original, and, and so it's uh, Willy Wonka. And you think about Willy Wonka, they're trying to get to that prize. Some of them just don't know how to get there. You realize that some Christians today, they don't, still don't know how to get there. They're still thinking that maybe it's all about me. Maybe if I show God, I was watching something the other day, and this uh, uh, elderly Jesus he's passed away now. He passed away at 91, but he was saying that he had, had, had seen some things. And what he was saying was that what he was told was what he was doing was no good. He, had, he, he, he said that he had seen heaven. He had uh, passed away for a few moments. And he said what he was told was no good. The sad thing about that is that he had to be in that state to realize something that Scripture has been telling us all this time. It's not about our works. If we think about it to try to make us look good, you might as well not do it. You might as well not do it. But see, moving past the past, we can't, we can't fathom that. We're stuck in the past thinking that, well, maybe if I just do it this way, God will see me as this person. The reality is you've got to drop the past, all those things, those bad things that you were taught before, the bad things that were spoken to you before, and start realizing this is what God has called you to be. This is what God is calling you to do. That's why we continue forward. Moving past the past. It's a movement that's just one instant in time. Sometimes the things that we've done is just one instant in time, and we hold on to it for so long, and we just cannot release it. We cannot release it. Each time you try to start moving forward, you start to see, I don't deserve God's love, his mercy. I don't deserve his favor. I don't deserve anything because you're chained. It's like that, that old thought where the elephant was chained, and then you release the chain, and the elephant still thinks, I'm right there. You realize that God has released the chains. The chains have been broken long ago. So why are we still holding on to it? Why are we still there? We've got to move past that. We've got to start moving towards the upward calling that we have. Most folks feel that if God doesn't love them, then neither will his children. This is why, again, we've got to start showing better. We've got to start doing better. It's not only just as a, a and when I say the church, now I'm speaking directly to the church, the individual, meaning you as the church, we've got to continue to do better. And if you haven't, we've got to start doing better. We've got to start doing better by others. And again, it's not about us. It's not about us. It's about our Father in heaven. It's what we do just because we love him, because he loved us first. That's what we do. So we have to look past our past. We have to look past the past of others. Christ has done it, and so aren't we called to imitate him? If Christ has done it, are we not called to imitate him and do exactly as he's done? So we can do this. We truly can do it. See, we're not perfected, but we should look toward perfection. It is obtainable. If you look on your, in your bulletins, 
And you look on the cover and you look inside. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. One constant. He's one constant. He's never changing. He's never changing. Alpha and Omega. And omega beginning and the end. You realize that if he is the constant, we are the ones that can change. So what we can do is make that change. What we can do is say the things that we don't like about ourselves, the things that we don't like. Scripture says, just Lord, just cut that out of me, that part out of me. We can do that change. He doesn't have to. He doesn't need to do that change. But it's us that needs to do that. So if someone says you can't change, then tell them, absolutely I can. The only one that can't change is Christ. The only one that doesn't change is Christ. So when someone says to you, well, you're going to amount to this, or you're going to amount to that, tell them, I can change. You realize, again, people see people for different reasons. They see things in people that aren't necessarily there, and they will speak that into your lives. You've got to stop listening to that. I can tell you that if you think about Christ, what did he do when he went back to his hometown? What was happening there? People were saying, well, isn't he the carpenter's son? Even his brothers laughed at him, mocked him, his own brothers, because they grew up with him. They couldn't see something that was better, grander. For that matter, neither could all the Jews that, came, that were there in that time. They didn't see the grandeur of him. They didn't know truly who he is. I think about also, think about David. And a lot of people say, you know, you have to look past don't look past the statue. So scripture says, well, that's what people were doing. They were looking at him and they were saying, hey, he's the, he's the one that is the, 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 uh, the shepherd boy, you know? What can he do? Look how small he is. So here's the thing. They only looked at what he was doing, not what, who he was to become. They didn't see that. See, that's the thing when people look at the physical and not the spiritual. They don't really see. They can't see how better you can be, how much more you are than what they see in front of you. You see, that's what we have to start showing people is that we're more than what they see. We're more than what they see because we are Christ's child. We are better. You are better. As I close here with Luke 9, 62, this is part of the, the, what it costs to follow Christ, the cost of being a disciple of Christ. This is Christ speaking himself. It says, but Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Don't look back. Keep your hand on the plow. You realize what happens if you are plowing something and you start to look a different direction? The plow starts to move, not in a straight line. It starts to veer off. Let me give you a better example for those that have never plowed before. Have you ever drove, driven down a road and all of a sudden, something catches your attention. Maybe it is your phone, you're texting or something. I don't know. Hopefully, you're not. But if you're driving down the road and you look and a sign catches your attention and you start driving, you start looking towards that direction, you realize the car is going to go in a different direction. It's not going to remain straight. Let me tell you, that happens if you haven't driven a car before. Let me tell you, just walk in a straight line. If you're walking and all of a sudden you look off to a different direction, you're not going to walk in that straight line anymore. So if you put your hand to the plow, if you put your hand towards saying, I'm going to follow Christ, I'm going to move forward, I'm going to let things go in the past, you have to stop looking back towards your past. You can no longer look back towards your past. You've got to move forward. There is one time, one instance that I say, when you are looking at your past, when you are looking at your past, drop it right there. Know that that's where you came from. You want to do better, and I'm going forward. Leave that past back where it was. It's got to stay there. It cannot continue to get for, uh, come forward. It cannot continue to weigh you down. It cannot continue to be one of those barriers that the enemy has placed right there for you to tell you how bad you are when Christ is trying to tell you how good you are and how badly he wants you, how badly he desires you, how badly he loves you. We've got to stop looking toward that past and holding on to that. That, per that, that whole purpose right there is to knock you off of your traje traje trajectory. Sorry. Might need some water right now. But the point is, if, you get, if you're heading in one direction and you get left, knocked off your trajectory, then what happens? 
all of a sudden, you're not getting closer to God. He's placed that barrier right there. We are to overcome those barriers. And you were to start this race without looking back, without thoughts of what you can't have, but with thoughts of all things belong to you. Do you realize there's a scripture? It's in 1 Corinthians. Look in 1 Corinthians 3. It says, all things belong to you. Anything that's godly, all things belong to you. So why are you preventing yourself from grasping all things? All things. God will provide everything that you need. The line is never, the, the line is never going to be straight when you're looking backwards. Things given of God for his purpose and the purpose of the advancement of his kingdom, they all belong to you. So grasp them. Try driving like that. It just it doesn't make sense. And never let anyone take that wheel from you. Never let anyone take the wheel from you. I remember when I was younger, I, I had some, I was the youngest. And I remember going up this winding road. We were heading up to a, to a mountain for um, a summer getaway. And it was a, a camp. And I remember my brother driving in front with my other brother. He was alive at the time. And I remember my parents, they didn't trust them for me because I was the youngest to ride with them who were the oldest. And what I remember about that ride is my mom was so scared and my dad trying to show calm. He was a little afraid also. But what he recognized is my brother who was driving decided that he wanted to change shirts while he was driving up a winding road going up to in California. And so what happened was he gave, he let my other brother who's sitting in the passenger seat take the wheel and drive him up this road. How dangerous, as a matter of fact, how foolish was that? Not only dangerous, let me tell you the moral of that story for this purpose right now is don't let someone else take your wheel either. Don't let someone else drive your life. You cannot do that. You don't know where they're going to crash you because believe me, you will crash that way. You have to be in control. You have to be in control and allow God to control you. Stop letting people get in your life. Stop letting people get into your mind. Stop letting people get into your heart. Start moving in a different direction. Your past is moving, but it's moving away. So why would you continue to paralyze yourself and let it move closer to you? There has to be a release. There has to be a release. And so what I've asked of you, or what I'm going to ask of you right now, and folks that are online, and folks that will see this later, what I want you to do, I want you to take all these things that are you feel, and you know in your heart they've been holding you behind, they've been holding you back, they've been not letting you release and gain the, the, the favor, gain the mercy, gain the grace of God, let you get closer to him. I want you to write those things down. This is not one of those, this is not one of those uh, ceremonies or anything like that. But what we want to do is we want to pray about that. We want to pray about the release. We want to pray about the loosening and binding that needs to happen in your life right now. I'm so hurt sometimes when I see people that are struggling. They're struggling and I see that they are so close to release. I see that they're so close to their victory. But they have not obtained it yet because they're still being held back by something that is holding them back, which is themselves. The person that is holding them back, which is just themselves. We have to release these things. We cannot hold on. We cannot take it. And I said, I know that this is the, the time of year when everyone wants to, you know, say, hey, this, is a, this is a new year. This is when I want to do something new. I want to change something in my room or my house and move furniture differently or look differently, try a new hairstyle. I want to go try something new, a new bite to eat, whatever that is. But right now I'm talking about what's more important in your life. What's more important is going to save your life. I want to be there. I want to be able to help you through that. We want to go join with you. This is about bearing one another's burdens. It's not about trying to hold on to these things anymore. We've got to release. I want to see the victory in each and every one of you. Not only do I want to see it right now here in the physical, I want to see it in the spiritual. I want to see each of you when we all get to heaven. That's the release. Things that are holding you back. Whatever it is that you feel that's just, people may say that you're not good enough and you feel that maybe I'm not. If it's a job that needs to be replaced, if it's a relationship that needs to be replaced, if it's a situation in a home that needs to be replaced, if it's a whatever that it is, 
It's time to release it. It's time to let that past be exactly where it is in the past. It's time to release it, never for it to rear its head again for you. And when you get weak at times, because let me tell you, the flesh does get weak. Call upon your brother and sister. Say, I just need prayer. Now, what I'm asking you to do right now is to write that down. But look, I don't need, if you want to give it to me, that's fine. But I don't need to see it. But I'm going to pray over each and every one of those papers, each and every one of those words that you write on those. I don't need to see it, though, because, you know, the Lord sees it. The Lord knows his children. And there are times when he, he speaks to me and he's, he shows me. It's time to release and move past your past. Father, I thank you right now, Lord. I thank you for you, first and foremost, for who you are, your provision, Lord, your thoughtfulness, Lord, your caring ways towards us, showing us that we do not know better for ourselves, but you do, Lord, giving us the opportunity to just come to you, giving us the opportunity to release, Lord, giving us the opportunity that you will take care of all of our burdens. The release needs to happen, Lord. Not only in these walls, Lord, but our world needs a release right now, Lord. There's too much fighting, Lord. Too much fighting. Too much separation. Your children are crying out to you, Lord. I know, we know that you hear all of our prayers. And I ask that you just touch each and every one of your children. Even if it's a gentle touch, just letting them know that there's more to life than what they see in front of them. Allow us to release, allow us to obtain, allow us to just come to you, Lord. And let us just rest all of our cares and our burdens right at your feet, knowing that you will pick them up and you will carry us when we cannot carry ourselves. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.